Hi everyone, this is Hibba from my little journal and today I'm going to be sharing with you a flip through of my 2024 reading journal, basically how my January turned out because I've shared with you recently uh, a few months ago my setup for my reading journal and the changes that I've been making or going to be making for 2024. And so I wanted to share with you how those changes are working for me and what I've been doing since I shared my setup with you. So I'm just going to start by saying I am no longer using A5 journals from Archer and Olive. I'm using B6 journals from Archer and Olive. I love the size. I have become obsessed with this size. It is perfect. It's small. I, I just think it's the perfect size for a reading journal. I feel like my A5 was bigger than it needed to be. Um, yes, I do read a lot, but I don't feel like I need that much space, especially that I am starting to review my books in my reading journal. So I really don't need a big one for this. Now I've removed a lot of trackers and challenges from my recent reading journals and uh, keeping it pretty simple and basic. I feel like I want to focus on my books and the reviews more than the tracking and the challenges. So let's take a look. Um, I did add a little sticker here that says I like big books and I cannot lie. That's just an old uh, sticker from the paper person shop or it might have been Kelly Perky. And if you've watched my reading journal setup for 2024, you will remember a lot of these pages and I'm starting to fill out my pages like my everyday challenge. And you can see I've not missed a day and I've read 11 books in January, which is pretty awesome and huge. I just coming on strong, especially that last year my reading was not that great. My bookshelf fee is looking great. I did forget to fill this space out first when I started. So I basically started on the shelf itself, but I remembered these books up here. So I started filling out these books. It doesn't matter to me that they're not in order. That doesn't bother me because obviously I have everything else in my journal in order. So it's okay if the bookshelf is not. And I did do two of those bookshelves because I knew I would be reading loads of books. Now for my reading with Hibba, we already read January. I give it three stars. Uh, February, I haven't read yet. Uh, I'm just waiting on it from my library. Once I get that, I will color in my star rating. Buddy reading big books with my friend Elizabeth. We've already read one big book, The Covenant of Water. That book was 724 pages. So we completed one book. We have five more to go for the year. What I read in 2024 is basically me writing down the books I've been uh, I've read with their star rating and this was all January. So I will use the same color for that month. So basically January was yellow, February is gonna be a different color. My Goodreads challenge is 60 books. And if I keep reading like this, I'm definitely going to reach that goal. But um, I just noticed I didn't fill out book number 11 for January, but I believe that was a romance. So I can go ahead and do that now. And romance is pink. These colors represent the genre. And so pink is romance. Moving on is my book lover cover page and basically every time I read a book I will add the book cover to this page and January filled out the whole top line so I'm kind of worried that my book covers are not going to fit on this page. I mean does it bother me? No not really. I might do another page even if I have to do it in the back of my notebook. I don't know if I'm going to do any flip outs and things like that. I just don't want to bulk up my notebook because I'm hoping to just use one notebook a year. I do not want to end up with two, but we shall see. I might change my mind later. This is January's calendar where I keep up with when I started a book and when I finished that book. So you can see here, I started The Covenant of Water on the second. So I just wrote down the name of the book and with the same marker, I will highlight until I finish that book. 
Once I'm done with the book, I'll write the end and use that same marker to kind of represent one book. And you can see here that I basically, it took me a, basically a week to read The Covenant of Water. Again, it was a big book. But then The Woman in Me from Brittany took me two days. I could have finished that book in one day, but I was kind of busy. So it took me two days. So that green represent one, one book. And then Sweet Thing was like three days. So I really like this. Um, I've done this for a while now, kind of tracking my reading through my calendar, and I find it to be such a fun way, an easy way to see how long a book takes me to finish, right? So it's a really fun and easy way to keep track of that. I also keep track of how many books I read on this page. So I read 11 books for January, and page count is 4,415 for the month, which is pretty awesome. And then we jump into my book reviews. This page is going to be for my favorite book. I already know what my favorite book is, and we'll set this up together in a little bit. But um, I've been keeping up with my reviews and I've been drawing my book covers. I mentioned this a few times last year that I might do this and draw my own book covers and I'm loving it. So I'm gonna start with, I am not an artist. Don't make fun of my drawings. I'm having a lot of fun and I don't care if people think they're stupid or they're not good. Um, honestly, they make me happy and it's a great way for me to practice drawing. I don't draw, I doodle usually. So it's fun to kind of see myself get better and better at it as the month goes by. Sometimes I was drawing the covers directly on my page like this one. I used some colored pencils. I did enjoy using colored pencils for this because markers, you can't get the right color. And with the colored pencils, you can kind of blend them in and stuff. So that was a lot of fun. Um, so my book review pages is basically title, author, started, finished, page count, format, and genre, and then the star rating. And I'm also um, adding the number as well. I, I do use that corner to add little cute things that relate to the book and basically just write my feelings, how I felt about the book, if I enjoyed it, if I didn't. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, do not read my reviews. If you've read the book, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm kind of all over the place with my reviews. I just write whatever I feel like saying about the book I just read and finished. That was fun and I'm starting to get better at it as I go. I did start doing this in 2023 in my daily journal where I would draw my book covers. So I had a little bit of practice. Um, sometimes my covers turn out great. I love this one very, very much. And sometimes it's a fail. So with the Britney Spears book, I had to draw her face. I just struggled. I'm not, like I said, I'm not an artist and it was really hard for me to draw her face. And I just gave up at some point and decided to just cut out her picture and add her face to my drawing. <laughs> it looks kind of funny, but also pretty cool. I. I think I'm just gonna have to do that when I am reading books like memoirs and it has the picture of the artist or the actor or whatever. So I'm okay with that. Also, I've been highlighting any quotes from the book um, just because if I'm like going through the reading journal and I don't wanna read the whole review, I can tell if I have a quote in there and kind of read that if I want to and kind of skip the rest of the review basically. I also do draw little things as well, my little elephant here, and use my stamps as well. So you'll see a lot of stamping, doodling, drawing in my reading journal. And this is why I'm really enjoying my 2024 reading journal because it's so me. I like to look at things in a creative way and I get bored with things. I've just gotten bored with printing book covers. And I just wanna do something that I can be creative and learn something new, something that I usually don't do, which is drawing. This one is one of my favorites. I think I did a really good job with this and I really had fun with this book cover. The Villa was not a favorite. It was not one of my favorite books, 
but I did have fun stamping my little lemons and adding some cuteness to my page. Faux was our Reading with Hiva book club pick, and so I used my Reading with Hiva book club stamp set. But I wanted that book to stand out, so I'm going to be using that stamp, and I've been using my little stickers. These are available for free if you're interested in documenting your Reading with Hiba book club uh, pics. This is available on Instagram. Just go to Reading with Hiba book club, click on the link, and you will find the freebie there and you can print it on sticker paper. But before I move on, I forgot to mention that at some point I started using Procreate. I do want to practice drawing on Procreate. I've watched a bunch of YouTube videos. I've asked friends who've helped me out as well. And that is another way to draw your book covers. And it's fun. I like doing it on Procreate. Um, if I'm like watching a show or something, just hanging out on the couch, this is a great way to kind of do my book covers. And so this one and that one were done on Procreate. I like that one a lot. This one, I was learning how to do the clouds on Pro Procreate. Uh, the lock every door didn't turn out as good as I would want it to be. I think it's the colors. I didn't do well with the colors, but it's still good. And then I was on a roll. So I did this next one, the mile high with Procreate and that airplane turned out perfect. It's a learning process. It's easier for me to draw directly on the page like this um, because it's just faster. On Procreate, I'm still learning, so it's taking me longer, but I am not a quitter. I will keep trying and trying, even if it takes me longer, because again, I do want to practice drawing it, like in my notebook and also with Procreate. So this is a, just a great journal for me to do that. And by the way, my favorite book for January is The Perfect Child. And so I'm going to come back in here in a little bit with you guys and fill the space in this spot with this book. So book number 10 was What Lies in the Woods. Again, I created this in Procreate. And honestly, like it looks almost exactly like the book cover. I did such a good job with this. What I like about Procreate is that you can kind of illuminate things and add like glow to things. That was so much fun to learn. But anyways, I had fun with that. And I feel like this one fits the cover perfectly. And it almost looks like I just printed the cover. But I did not document book 11 yet. And I did this one in Procreate as well. This one was a lot of fun to recreate. And I'm going to stick that down here, add all the things, uh, my review and everything. Probably do this with you as well. I also did sketch out February and we'll set up February together. So this is gonna be fun. I need to get this done uh, today because I've already finished reading a book and I need to fill out my calendar and also jump into like, you know, February favorite and start reviewing my books. So let's get to it. I am going to start by finishing up my favorite book of January. And like I said, it's the perfect child. So we're just going to stick down my photo, fill in this blank spot and then work on my next few pages. Okay, let's start putting together my reading journal. So I'm going to start with my favorite book of January. And like I said earlier, my favorite was The Perfect Child. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick down my book cover. I'll be using this old Everyday Explorers book stamp to stamp out title and author. And I will also use a different Everyday Explorers stamp set to stamp I gave it whatever many stars and obviously I gave it five stars. So a lot of the stamps that I'm using in my reading journal is pretty old. Some might be sold out. Whatever I do find, I will link it in the description box for you. And if I can't find that stamp set, I will go ahead and um, link the shop itself. Maybe you can find something similar. Anyways, I'm just going to color in my little open book and then we can move on to book 11 in January. Like I said, I haven't put it together on purpose because I wanted to share with you how I put together one of my reviews. So for book number 11, I read uh, The Gram Effect 
and I drew this cover on Procreate, printed it on sticker paper, and I'm just going to add it to the corner of my page. I will also draw in a spine and book pages so it can look like I drew it directly on my page. We'll color in the spine and the book pages, and then I'm going to fill in some information about the book, little things that I want to remember. So basically the title, the author, when I started, finished this book, pages, uh, format, genre, all that information, I'm just going to add it right next to my cover. And also that top space is going to hold my star rating as well. That I'm done adding all the information I need about my book I'm gonna draw a hockey stick in the bottom corner I like to use this space to draw something that relates to the book and so because a hockey stick is really easy to draw I just went with that I usually go with simple things I'm still learning you guys I do start with a pencil always when I doodle and then I go over it with a pen or marker. And uh, once I do that, I'm gonna color in my hockey stick and I'll also add a border to my page. For some reason, uh, I just love borders. If you've been following me for a while and you were around when I did my daily journals, I always added a border. I just feel like the page is complete when you add a border. Anyways, once I add my border, I want to add my star ratings. And I'm gonna have a little boo-boo here when I add my star ratings. I stamped my stars upside down. And so to fix that, I'm gonna re-stamp it on sticker paper and cover up my boo-boo. I do this all the time. I always have some kind of boo-boo when it comes to stamping, but sticker paper is your friend, use it. I just basically always have sticker paper on hand when I'm stamping. Anyways, once I fix that, I'm gonna grab my number stamp, stamp 11. I'll color in my star ratings. And then I'm gonna move on to my February calendar and put that together as well. Okay, let's put together February's calendar. As you can see, I've already sketched out my calendar and all I'm gonna do now is just grab my pen and go over it. I'll also write in the dates within each box and I'm gonna be stamping the days of the week and my February title. So uh, for my days of the week and my February, I'm sticking to the same exact stamp sets that I used in January because if you know me, you know I love consistency and I just love how January turned out. So I'm just gonna do the same exact thing for February. Once I go over my calendar, uh, I will grab those stamp sets, add the days of the week and I will stamp February right next to my calendar, so going across. And uh, it's gonna look really, really cute. I'm just gonna change up the colors this month and I think I'm gonna do that every month. I'll just use the same stamps, uh, the same idea, but different colors.
Now that I'm done stamping the days of the week, I can grab my alpha stamp and stamp out February uh, going across the side of my calendar. And to fill in the space between my like February and the edge of my layout, I'm going to use some washi tape. I have been enjoying using washi tape to fill in that space. It's also a great way to add some color to my layout. thing I like to keep up with as well in my calendar space is my books, like how many books I read for the month, and also my uh, page count. So what I decided to do is use the same stamp set that I used last month. I had this little blob looking stamp that I just stamped two of those and then I'm going to stamp books and I will fill that space with how many books I read. And then the second one, I'm going to stamp pages read Obviously, this is where I'm going to keep my page count. I will color in those two blobs with a very nice mute tan. And I will also grab my dot marker to add some color to my days of the week. And then I can move on to my first book read in February. I wasn't going to do this on camera, but I thought it would be fun for you to see how I draw my book cover directly on my page and not use Procreate. So once I'm done coloring in February with this pretty green, I'm just going to flip over my page and start working on my first book that I read in February. So for my first book in February, I decided to go ahead and draw it ahead of time. Just because of filming, it would take me way too long to do this uh, while I'm filming. And I used a very dark pencil for this because I wanted to make sure that I can still see the lines once I color in my cover. I knew portions of my cover was very dark and I didn't want to lose what I've already drawn in, if that makes sense. So anyways, I am going to use my colored pencils to color this in. And the book starts with like a light gray and it gets darker as you go lower towards the bottom of the book. So I'm going to start with my lighter gray and then basically start shading in the darker grays and blending them in. And to blend in my colored pencils, I usually use my white colored pencil to do this or I will use a q-tip but I find that the white pencil works really well for blending and I just like how smooth it is once I'm done but I did want to mention that I am not a professional I never use colored pencils actually this box is for my daughter and she kind of gave me tips and tricks on how to use colored pencils I'm more of a marker girl but if you're going to do these types of covers yourself I definitely recommend colored pencils because you can blend your colors nicely and get the right color that you're looking for for your book cover. But anyways, I'm done coloring in my cover, which was really easy to do. This was one of the easy ones. And I'm just going to grab my pen and go over my lines and color in my author's name. I will also grab a white gel pen to add my title. When my title is in white, I usually use my white gel pen because it really helps the title pop, especially against a dark background. I'm almost done with my book cover. I'm just going to color in my spine and my book pages. And then I'm going to add all the information right next to my book cover about this book. So basically, I'm on repeat, just going to add title, author, date started, date finished, my book or my page count, also format and genre. And uh, right underneath that, I'm going to add my star rating and my book number as well. Thank you. 
this book is all about a will and a girl who gets an inheritance. And so what I thought I would use to have something related to the book in the corner is the stack of papers. I just felt like it looked like a will to me. So I'm just going to go for it. Uh, I don't have to draw it out myself. And uh, once I'm done stamping, I'm going to add a border. I'm also going to color in those stacks of paper and basically call my layout done. I am really having fun with my reading journal this year. This is what I needed to get me back on track last year. I know myself. I get really um, down if the project isn't calling on me anymore and I have to make a change. And this was the right change for me. I just love how it looks. It keeps me creative. It keeps me motivated to read. And I just love it. Anyways, if you want to see more of my reading journal reviews and setups, let me know. I will definitely be sharing more if that's something you want to see here on my channel. But anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I hope to see you guys very soon. Bye.